Bears, the Adelaide Football Club, convincing 14 point winners. They go into their fourth grand final. And Daisy's Dees have done it. Football's oldest club will chase the game's newest crown. Melbourne into the AFLW grand final. Happy Grand Final Week, everyone, and welcome to The W Show, presented by NAB. It is great to have your company Saturday afternoon, 12.30pm Eastern Time, Adelaide and Melbourne, to go head-to-head -head at Adelaide Oval in an AFLW Grand Final. We are very excited here, and it helped me unpack all of it and preview the big game is award-winning journalist Sarah Black and Collingwood star Bree Davey. Ladies... I am so excited about this one. How are you feeling, Brie? I'm pumped. It's um, obviously the season, it's it's so short, but it also at times feels long because you put in the work and things like that. But yep. it, look, obviously my girls aren't in it, so that's, that's one thing that's not great about it, but um, I'm pumped to watch the clash. Sarah, that game at the MCG, which we will get to shortly, was just incredible, wasn't it? It really was. It had everything you want in a final. It was Both coaches said it was such a high-intensity game. I haven't seen anything quite like it. Um, and some of the goals that kicked were just absolutely superb. All right, well, let's take a look at that game. It was Daisy's delight for the Demons, of course, getting over the line in a thriller. In the end, it was a frenetic final few moments, wasn't it, Sarah? 6,000 people too at the MCG to witness this one. Yeah, it was one of those ones where, you know, writing the match report, you have a few different leads going because you're not <laughs> quite sure exactly how it's going to end up. Um, I think, you know, the, the Lions would have to be so proud of the way they came out in that last quarter um, and really fought and pushed the Ds all the way because they did look like they were going to pinch it. Um, that 5-6-5 five, five free kick, though, in the last centre bounce that gave the ball back to the Ds. That was the real momentum sucker out of the game. Yeah. So, like, oh, all right, the Ds have got this one now. Um, but, really, it was two high-quality teams, their absolute best. And the experience of um, some of the senior players for Melbourne really stood up in the final moments too, Brie. Yeah, look, definitely. I think that's the one of the key things, particularly in finals footy, um, is your experience. And if those girls can sort of step up, keep a clear head and, and bring the younger ones, or the more, I guess, the less experienced girls along with them, that's that's one of the key drivers in, in any win in a final. What, one of the other impressive things were the young Ds that also had terrific performances in that preliminary final. Alyssa Bannon, one of those, had never been to the MCG to watch a game of football before, Sarah, and you spoke to her after the match. All of a sudden, she's a hero at the home of footy. Yeah, well, I sort of asked the question, like, you know, expecting her to say, yeah, I've been sitting in the stands all my life, couldn't believe that I was out there. And she said, no, the only time I've been at the G was for the <laughs> Melbourne Melbourne's <laughs> Christmas party last year, <laughs> held at the MCG. And she kicks three goals. And she kicks three goals. Her pace was just electric. Melbourne really utilised her well, mm. too. They brought Taylor Harris up the ground and created that space for Bannon to run into. And really, the Ds had no, uh, the Lions had no answer for that combination of height and pace at ground level. She's been a revelation, hasn't she, for them this season? She's been incredible. Honestly, one of my favourite players in the comp to watch. Um, I think as well, it's more—it's not just what she does with the footy, it's off the footy. I saw her do a few pressure acts and things. She brought the ball to a stoppage in their 50, yep. and that's so important in the women's game. Once, we, once you get it up there, you want to try and trap it in there for as long as you can. So for me, that sort of stuff from her was impressive as well. So the other preliminary final played out as we all thought it might with the Adelaide Crows victorious, of course, against the Fremantle Dockers. The Crows going through to their fourth grand final, which is just an incredible feat in itself, Sarah. It really is. To consider the fact that we've only had five grand finals in AFLW history, um, it's quite extraordinary, just um, their, their experience, their maturity, but also the way that they've been able to regenerate that side over mm. time. You know, we, we, we've spoken about the champions of the game for so long, but it's, it's the new generation coming through that have really driven Adelaide this time around. And then you've got Chelsea Randall, who missed last year's grand final due to concussion. She will be out there and Brie against the Dockers. She was incredible. Just talk me through how integral she is to this side. I think, look, it's just the rebound that she gives them. And she's so smart the way and, and brave the way she backs into backs. You know, she's been voted most courageous, I think, almost every time, every year. So... Um, yeah, I think f for me and watching Chelsea in these positions, like she just gets herself in the right spots and, and helps that Adelaide defence rebound so well.
And I think one thing to note here is the fact that, you know, we were talking about the break. How are teams going to manage it, um, you know, coming off three weeks but in between games? Mm. But for someone like Chelsea Randall, mm. who's really struggled for, um, for continu continuity in her hamstring this year, um, three weeks off, just what the doctor ordered. 12 intercept possessions from 15 touches, five marks and two tackles. She's certainly one that the Ds are going to have to try to limit the influence. Just on the Frio Dockers, Sarah, how do they take the next step? Because we look at what they've managed to achieve so far and, and they have just fallen short in finals. It is so hard, we should say, to get to a grand final, but how do they take that next step? Yeah, well, 2020 obviously stands out as the year, possibly that missed opportunity there. Um, they were absolutely flying. Um, one thing that they've had is a few late season fade outs over the last few years. So whether that's, it's quite a taxing game style they play, whether they need to make a few little tweaks there. But um, I've really enjoyed, like I loved their, their qualifying final against the Roos. I think that's what they really need to aim for, that really smart style of footy, mm. really lowering their eyes um, and bringing their teammates into the game. But I, I do think the midfield might need a little bit more depth, Bree. Yeah, look, I, I, you sort of took the words out of my mouth, I think, as well, because they do play that sort of very high-paced sort of style. Um, trying to maintain that for a whole season is really hard. And when, when they get it right, it's, it's really hard to beat. But at the same time, teams do know how to set up for that sort of play. So going into finals, I think you're right. I think it's that, more that smart style we need to see and whether they can slow, slow the game down a little bit and get it more on their terms rather than sort of go, go, go. All right, let's take an in-depth look now at Saturday's AFLW Grand Final. So excited. There are storylines everywhere. Sarah, first cab off the rank though. Eloise Jones and Najwa Allen missed the prelim due to suspension. Do they come straight back into this side? I think Eloise Jones is a no-brainer. She has been in excellent touch this year. She's in the All-Australian squad, um, plays such an integral role in that wing, so I imagine she'll be straight in. Najwa has now missed two games with suspension um, and the Crows, you know, they do have pretty good depth in defence, like we saw Chelsea go back there on the weekend. Um, you know, I think that one will be the one that they're weighing up, whether they unsettle a lineup um, mm. so close to the, in, the, in a grand final, Brie, I'm just not too sure. Yeah, look, I've, sort of same thoughts. I think Jones comes straight back in. Um, look, they might, they might bring Najwa Allen back in in terms of their sort of I guess, experience, but you're right, do they unsettle it? Could it unsettle the team? You just don't know, but it'll be interesting either way. So last time they met was round four. It was the Adelaide Crows who got the win at Norwood Oval. The Ds were kept goalless until three-quarter time. Anne Hatchard, Ebony Marinoff combined for 55 disposals and 803 metres gained. How do you stop someone <laughs> or the duo that is, you know, Marinoff and Hatchard, Brie? Yeah, look, they're just both such beasts in there, really, and they're so powerful. And I think you want to try and go head-to-head -head with them, basically, okay. and, and make their day hard. Um, and I, I think that's with any good midfielder. You don't want them just running off the chain being loose. So I think the Ds are going to have to start pretty tight on them, I'd, I'd say, and, and back themselves in. But, um, yeah, just try and limit their impact. Uh, they're, like I said, they're both absolute strong beasts around the ball, so you want to sort of put a bit of body on them. The big one too, Erin Phillips. Do you tag her? And further to that, is she taggable? Good question. Uh, look, oh, she's, we all know how much of a great player Erin is. Um, and she's just smart. That's the thing. She's, just, you really, she's really smart. So you, wanna, you would try to put an experienced player on her if you can. Um, you definitely want, don't want to be putting any of your young, young inexperienced players on, should I say. But, yeah, look, she, she's, I think she can be tagged. But, again, she's just so smart. Um, so I, I would put someone to her to start um, and see if she gets off the chain and then go from there. But she's definitely a player they'll have to they'll look at. Who do you think they might put on her, Sarah? We had Beck Goddard sitting where you were sitting, Brie, last week, and she said one thing you could do is, is really try and get her flustered and get under her skin and just, like, poke and prod and frustrate her that way because that can put her off. Sarah, if you're looking at the magnets, who would you send to Erin Phillips? I don't want that job. I don't think anyone does. <laughs> it's a tough one because with Erin, the beauty of Erin is that she can start in the middle and lose her defensive tag that mm. way um, and m push forward and then all of a sudden you've got to swap, a, you've got to swap opponents. Um, I think if she goes deep, it's probably Libby Birch's job, our co-host. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, Libby would be the one to match her physically um, in that sense. But, yeah, yeah then when Erin moves back into the midfield... You don't want to lose Libby from the back line. No. So, mm. very difficult task. It certainly is. Um, obviously, last year's preliminary final is another one that the Ds will probably look closely at 
as well. Uh, not the result they would have wanted in that prelim at Adelaide Oval. We asked Libby when she was on the W Show a few weeks ago with you and I, Bree, about that experience and what the Ds have learnt from that. This is what she had to say. What did you learn from that prelim final mm. loss to the Crows last year? Because it was a big one and probably a, a wake-up call. Is there something that you've taken from that that's driving you forward this year? Yeah, and another game, Nat, that we took a lot from this year was against Adelaide again yep. at Norwood Oval early on in the season. And uh, for us, it's been about having the belief that we can do it. I think for numerous amount of years, we've, we've been up there, but yep. we've in those key moments under finals pressure, we're folded. And it, it really is the fact that we have trained for this. We've trained under finals pressure, you know, during pre-season. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's now time to do it rather than can we? It's like, when will we do it? I love that from her, Sarah. Really strong comments, weren't they? Yeah, they really were. And we were able to see it on the field against the Lions. Um, just, just to have that belief within them that, that they can take that next step. It's really come across in their games this year. Key matchups, Bree. Taylor Harris is a big one. She's this will be her third grand final. All of them against the Crows, just for different clubs. <laughs> I'm sure she's really sick of losing to those <laughs> damn Crows in grand finals. Who would get the job on on Taylor Harris because it's a big one. It is a big one, and we know when Tay gets off the hook, she is just so dominant. Um, and her, I think her aerial is is you know obviously elite, and one thing that the Crows will have to definitely get ready for. Um, so for me, I potentially send someone like Ellen to her. She's got the height and the strength to go with, with Harris. Again, tough job, but that would, that would be my choice. Yeah, and I think um, it depends on what line they play her on because the Crows are unlikely to push Ellen too far up the ground. She's often on that last line of defence. So if Taylor plays cross centre half forward, then maybe mm. it's Chelsea Randall, who has played on her in grand finals in the past. Any other key matchups that you're looking forward to seeing, Sarah? Well, the midfield battle's yeah. going to be interesting just because the Crows have those bigger bodies. Mm. Um, so the Ds, you know, with Paxman out onto the wing now, you've got Lily Mithin and Tyler Hanks in there, who are excellent players, but they are quite small. Yep. Mm. Up against an M. Marinoff and an Anne Hatchard. Um, Maddie Gay could become really vital, I think, in trying to to block and, and, you know, pave the way for those smaller girls to push through. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's definitely one mm. to watch. All right. W Awards Tuesday night. Very exciting week. It's a massive week on women's.afl and, of course, the AFLW official app. Our reporters have put together their thoughts on who might come away with the best and fairest award. Ebony Marinoff. Sarah, just take me through this one. Yes, yeah, so this is a 3-2-1 we do at the end of every match that's covered um, and then I tally them all up and make sure, triple count and make sure everything's, <laughs> You've done your everything's maths. right. Good. Yeah, so Ebony Marinoff coming up top with 20 votes. Oh, we always, uh, uh, not confused, but look to see which way the Adelaide vote will split, whether mm. it will go with Hatchard or Marinoff. Um, Emily Bates, you know, has had an outstanding season um, and I expect Monconti or Paul a few as well. Who do you think, Bree? Who's your pick for... Tuesday night. Look, it's a, well, there's such a good handful of players there, isn't there? And um, I'd, I'd expect all those girls we saw on the screen to, to vote. Um, I think Bates has been been really great, yeah. and um, I think obviously she's probably one of those players that has gone under the radar a little bit over the seasons and hasn't probably been recognised for how good she is. So hopefully she she gets recognised this year. Now, do you remember this night <laughs> from last year? Joint winners with Kiara Bowers, of course. Two separate functions, which was a little strange. And you're going to yeah. play a role. Tomorrow night, have you been practicing your medal presentation? Yeah, I've been hitting the gym, like, in the way, <laughs> just to make perfect, um, yeah, execution of it. But no, I'll be there early tomorrow to, to rehearse it, so I, I better be all right at it, hopefully. We'll see. It sounds like a good way to annoy your sisters. <laughs> just, I need to practice, guys. I need to practice this and just continue. Oh, yeah, to... I should. Um, tonight, I think yeah. that's what we we'll look forward doing. to critiquing your performance <laughs> um, later on in, in next week's W show, of course. And we'll have full coverage, a live stream on women's.afl and the AFLW app of the W Awards on Tuesday night. We've also got Bonnie Too Good and Ellie Blackburn, the dynamic duo at the Bulldogs. We're unleashing them on the Coral Carpet.
carpet <laughs> on Tuesday night. And you can catch that live on the AFLW official Facebook page from 5.55pm Eastern Time. So make sure you don't miss that. It's going to be very, very entertaining indeed. All right, we want to look ahead to the sign and trade period, which is coming, Sarah, in early May. Who are the top targets? Yeah, it's a little bit terrifying how quickly this is coming around yep, the corner with sure the is. season starting in August. Now, some of this has already been reported that Ash Riddell has um, been offered a, a, a job. <laughs> she will offer a job, really, yeah, yeah, really in Sydney. Um, Ellie Blackburn also has some interest from the Swans. Izzy Huntington at GWS. Um, all the Dwyer is in hot demand. Oh, she but be. What a season. don't worry, Lions fans. She looks to be staying at the Lions. Um, and Sarah Rowe is also coming under a, a bit of interest from the Swans. This Scott Gowans factor. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's big. He's he is known for building really strong relationships with his players. He understands women's footy and builds a good culture. Um, so people are, are willing to consider to move um, to play under him. Another consideration for Sarah Rowe is the Gaelic season, of course, playing over there in Ireland. And, and with the season being brought forward, it... it means that she's probably going to have to make a call. Either way, I'm sure you're hoping it's to stay at Collingwood <laughs> and play AFLW, Bree. No, yeah, definitely. Look, Sarah is not only a good player, but just such a great person and yeah. brings so much to team culture. So, yeah, look, I like to think she's staying and... and I know she wants to stay, so it'll just be interesting to see see what happens. So expansion, it's uh, it's a word that we love because it means that our competition is going to be whole, finally, with 18 teams in the comp. It's, it's a brilliant thing, but expansion is also a scary word for the current clubs because it means that some of their players will be moving to these four new clubs in Port Adelaide, Sydney, Hawthorne and Essendon. And Brisbane coach Craig Stasevich, well, he's been very vocal about expansion and the effect it's had on the Lions and he spoke about it once again after the loss to Melbourne on Saturday. No, I'm not going to say anything <laughs> because I can get very cranky about that. Um, if it's going to happen again now, like that's fine to say the comp needs to expand and you need players going here. It doesn't help. It never helps us. It never helps us because we're the ones that put all the time and effort into developing players, developing relationships, and then what do you do? Just go and pull the rug out from under. It, it drives me freaking mad. I don't know if there's another way of doing it, but it drives me mad because we run the team. We coach the team. We develop the players. Your big offers come in from the clubs that are not even in the comp and they end up being the, you know, the tail ends up wagging the dog and they, they make all the demands about how to get players, so... Said too much. I absolutely love <laughs> Craig Stasevich. I don't want to talk about it. Next minute, bleh, and then, oh, I've said too much. Um, do, do you have concerns? Does your club have concerns about expansion? I mean, no-one wants to lose players, yeah. but it's a reality that we need to field, you know, four new teams. That's the thing. It is hard, and um, I've been stressed about the expansion coming up. Only because you don't you don't want to see your teammates yeah. go. You want them to stay, but you can understand the movement and everything with new teams coming in. But every team is in the same position. Um, some might get hit harder than others, and you just hope it's not your club. But um, yeah, look, it's something that we understand's got to happen, and we've been preparing for. Sarah, what is the thoughts? I mean, I'm assuming that Craig Stasevich's comments there, are, he's not alone in in feeling that. No, not at all. Um, and you, like, look, we've seen some teams get hit really hard, like the Lions in the past. Um, I think a lot, a lot of it also comes down to club culture and, and do the players want to be there? Mm. Um, so the Dockers were, were managed to hold on to the core of their best 21 um, when the Eagles came onto the scene. The Lions um, lost quite a few players. Um, but, but they then the flip some side, new ones. Yeah, the flip side of it, which Stasovich did acknowledge, um, was the fact that they brought in Dakota Davidson, Ola O'Dwyer, Talia Hickey, Kathy Spark. Like, these girls have been the, have now the core of their yeah. team. Mm. So it does create new opportunity, It, but it also really stings at the time. And, like, you know, I feel for the fans who, who grow really attached to their, mm. their favourite players and, and they might be on the move. But I think we do need to remember that this is the last one. Yeah. This is it. 
So short-term pain, long-term gain. Yep. Yeah, it's tough. I don't know what the answers are, but uh, I know it's a very, very complex situation. All right, grand final predictions <laughs> on Saturday. Here we go. And Sarah, you're the only one that's tipped the crows. Oh God, the best side in the past six I years. Know. I can't believe you well, guys haven't jumped on board. <laughs> Bree, I feel like you and I might be tipping with our hearts and not our heads <laughs> here. But you think the D's, are they a chance? Yeah, oh, look, I think they can do it. Um, I think the one thing we've seen is the belief that Libby talked about earlier in, in this ep these episodes. But you can really see it. They just connect on the field. They play for each other. And I don't know, I, I just have a feeling the D's going to get up. Look, I wouldn't be surprised if it went either way. Um, I just think that the sting of last year um, will really carry the crows through. Plus, you know, this is the last time. This is the last hurrah. It is. Will Aaron Phillips's Adelaide Crows get the job done or will it be Daisy's delight? Finally, a premiership. Who knows? All I can tell you is we're going to have you covered all week in the lead up to Saturday's grand final and of course after the match for all the colour and the post-match celebration women's.afl and aflw official app is the place to go Bree, thank you so much for coming on the w show we've loved having you all year and we wish you all the best for what's to come next thanks very much nat thanks sir sarah as always top work you can see all of sarah's work on women's.afl thank you so much for joining us happy grand final week we'll see you soon